Mushrooms really have a sense of humor. It's amazing. Um, often the majority of my successes with mushrooms comes from the strategy of benign neglect. Is that humans or my mind thinks I know something and I'm working with the mushrooms and the mushrooms, you know, if when they're speaking to me, they're, they're basically saying, no, no, you got part of it right, but the most of it is wrong. You know, leave me alone and I'll show you what I want you to see. And then uh, when I walk away from them, and I come back and I go, oh my goodness, look at this. And then I realize, oh, now I understand. Mushrooms are the grand molecular decomposers of nature. They're, they're the soil magicians. They build the foundation of soils. And they're the intermediate between life and death. And when plants and animals die, fungi come in and, and decompose them. Now, before decomposition, ooh, that sounds bad, but they, you know, they're, it, it basically is channeling nutrients back into the biosphere uh, for benefit of the other organisms that give rise to the habitats that give us life. So in Asian culture, um, mushrooms are looked upon as being rebirth, and in British culture, mushrooms were associated with death and decomposition, but they didn't have the sense of rebirth. And this is where now we have a much better understanding that this is a part of the life cycles of the planet, and mushrooms build the soils that you know, benefit plants that lead to biodiversity that attract insects and mushrooms attract insects and there's a great little dance between fungi and insects going on all the time and because we're living in these habitats full of plants uh, you know we're always in constant biomolecular communi communication with our ecosystem and fungi do that in a very very clever way mushrooms being so powerful and so strange that it's not unusual for people to fear that which is powerful, but they don't understand. And so the enigma of mushrooms has been something that, because they come up and they disappear in a few days, a plant stays around for a lot longer. So human to mushroom contact is a very short temporal experience and they're seemingly come from nowhere and they disappear. And for anyone who's gone out to collect mushrooms, they are one of the greatest displays of elegance and, and, uh, and grace from nature their forms, their colors, uh, their communities. Uh, there's something that's just beyond your imagination, what nature you know, can produce. And so mushrooms really spoke to me from their artistic and aesthetic value, as well as the fact that they're culinary and they're good to eat. So, you know, it was, and also being in the old growth forest or in the woods got me out on adventures. Like some people go, well, if you're gonna go to the woods, what are you gonna do? I never had that issue. When I'm in the woods, I'm, observing constantly natural systems. I'm looking for different mushrooms and, or evidence of them. Sometimes the mycelium, which is the white cobwebby cell structure that's in the ground, will uh, wick up to the surface and I'll find veins of mycelium that most people will say, oh, there's something whitish on the ground. And I'll go, ah, that's something really different. And then if I smell it, what I've come to learn and many of my colleagues use is scent signatures. When you go into the uh, forest after a rain, and you smell that sweet, sweet smell, M much of that smell is the fragrant sig signatures being outgassed by mycelium. And so there are several species that we find by scent. And then uh, our nose then tracks these scents and when you become familiarized with them, I can go back to that location months later and the mushrooms will be appearing, uh, which I had not seen before. So, very cool.